Hello, hi, I'm Dr. Maxim. I am the principal at Princeton Community Middle School and I'm here today to unstandardize school and tell you why we need to start the crusade to end high stakes state testing in our schools immediately. So let me give you a little bit of history of who I am and where I'm at. This is my ninth year at the middle school, Princeton Community Middle School. I've been there five years uh, as the head principal, four years as an assistant principal. Through my educational experiences, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the positions that I had. So I graduated college in 1999 from Miami University. I started substitute teaching right away at 2000. Then from there, I got a building sub where I was working as an, uh, an emotionally disturbed long-term sub. After that, I got a position as a sixth grade language arts social studies teacher. And by the way, I was coaching football, basketball, and baseball the whole time. So coach is another one of those uh, nice roles and positions that I've had over the years. But as I got that, that was at a suburban school in the suburbs. And then I had four years where I went as a sixth grade language arts social studies teacher, fifth grade intervention specialist at an urban charter school in the West End downtown Cincinnati. So I had four years there. From there, I went and became a developmental uh, instructor for uh, math and English language arts. Uh, at Lincoln College of Technology, and then I was the director of education. From the director of education, I went back to teaching sixth grade language arts, and then I got the opportunity here to be at Princeton, the assistant principal. So while I'm talking to you today and explaining that, in all my 20 plus some years, I've never heard one teacher, student, or staff member say, thank you for the standardized state testing test that I just took, not once. So I'm here to tell you, we need to get rid of that. We need to eliminate it, and I'll give you a little bit of history and context. We need to immediately stop the funding for any of those high stakes testing that we have, and we need to put that towards social emotional learning and hands-on transformational learning that needs to be in our buildings, not standardized state tests that waste precious resources, time, and energy from our students and our staff. Now, you're gonna say, a tattoo. How does that tie into standardized testing? As you know, a great teaser, and being a language arts teacher, I'm going to tease you a little bit with that, and I'm going to come back to it and explain that. So if you go through here, schools should eliminate that. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of, of context of this. Back in the 90s, there was no child left behind. Basically, that was an attempt to industrialize education and put education with business model. Meaning, business people said, education, you got, you got to have a formal way that you're going to rank these schools. How are you going to grade them? You need to give them all this, and then that's where it came. No child left behind. Well, as we know, there's a lot of things that were left behind with that. But as we, as we go through there, no child left behind was in the 90s. So then in about 2000, 2010, we went from states, then we went to common and core curriculum, which was basically an attempt for uh, a national or, or for a countrywide curriculum. Of course, that didn't work because we can very, uh, our country can't agree on a lot of things. So, of course, we couldn't agree on a national curriculum for our schools, let alone what we would do there. So, that's a common core curriculum, and that was a, a little bit. Now, the pendulum has swung a little bit back because of COVID, and there, there, we took a little bit off high stakes testing. And an example of that would be we learned that there were a lot of other ways that you could could look and understand. Now, so as we go through that, we realize that the focus of state testing needs to be on other things as well. We need to do more holistic. And the state and, uh, and educators are trying to do that. Okay, so here's what I'm going to tell you. You're going to say, well, if this doesn't work, it, 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 why are we still doing it? Like, we know no teacher ever said, thank you for the state tests that are coming up. No principal ever said, thank you for the extra pressure that's put on me that I have to worry about state test scores. Okay? One of the things you look up there, and I, and I don't read, I hate reading uh, PowerPoints because you can read. But the last sentence is something that I really want you to pay attention to. That is something that resonates with me. Through my research, through my understanding of conversations informally in every one of those roles that I've had, I've, we, we come to this. It is an indicator of resources, your social, emo, or I'm sorry, your socioeconomic background. That is more of an indication when you see a state test than you do about achievement or learning. Now, again, I know they're making some attempts to fix that, but it's not enough. Now, why are we still doing this, okay? We realize that teachers, 
parents, students, everybody's telling us that they don't want to do this and it's not effective and it's not working. So why are we doing this? I, I can't understand this, why we're doing this madness. Einstein said, you know, it, doing the same thing over and over and expect different results is crazy. That, now I'm not against evaluation that we're testing, like map testing, things that we do to instruct, that, 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 in, that, that uh, inform our instruction and we get better with every day. That's not what I'm trying to say, okay? But we do need to do that. Now, back to what I want to talk to you guys about. I'm going to give you a story. I love telling stories, okay? When I was a junior in high school, we had an opportunity in my school where we did community service. We were able to go to different places, and we were able to do things like uh, be in elementary schools, go to different opportunities that, that you don't, don't see. So I got the opportunity to go downtown. I got the opportunity to be the only white person, the only white male that I could see in the whole around it. That changes your perspective when you're in this position and that happens to you. I wouldn't change it for anything. So that exposure to that, it made me realize, hey, my junior year, we're going on a student exchange to South Dakota Native American Reservation. I didn't know anything about either one of those things. Not one, okay? But I tell you this, I signed up and said, let me go. So here I am, little kid, I was a football guy, athlete, all that kind of stuff, wasn't into, didn't get into music and stuff. I got kicked out of chorus when I was in eighth grade, but that's a different story. But the point is, if you look at this, I signed up for this exchange, okay? So what it was, we got, we took a four hour trip, I'm sorry, we loaded up the plane, got off in South Dakota, I didn't even know where that was, first time on a plane. First time doing anything like that, anything. My dad thought I was crazy. I had to miss baseball. And coincidentally, when I, when I went on this trip, I got demoted to, from varsity to JV because the coach said, you're not committed to baseball. Most ridiculous thing I ever heard. But anyway, that's a whole nother story. So we go over there. First night there. First night there, my group, we're sitting. It's a dormitory. Remind you, it's a, a, a reservation in South Dakota. If you know anything about that, that's third war country condition. So they send their students to dormitories to go to school so they get out of that environment during the school year. I learned that while I was there. Anyway, first night there, I'm sitting there with the two or three guys. I'm sitting with dormitory rooms. We, we're having a conversation. We talk about, I've never seen a Native American person before. I've never been on a plane before. How do they talk? Are they going to be mean? Are they going to hate us? You know, all the stereotype stuff that you would hear about and talk about as a 17, 16-year-old student kid. You're worried about it, all right? You're talking to your friends. So finally, we hear some noise, okay? Next door, we hear a couple guys wrestling. So we, we shh, all right? What we hear, because it's an adjoining room, the dormitories share a bathroom, so that's similar to like colleges, okay? So we hear them talking, so we immediately shut up. About two or three of the Native American students that are there are in their dormitory. Guess what conversation they have? I've never seen a white person before. I'm like, I've never interacted. Oh, yeah, oh. one kid said, or one student, I, I remember this. He said, oh, I saw him at the bowling alley. We see him at the bowling alley. I'm like, wow, okay. So, you know, and what it made me realize was in, in that moment, in that moment, we are all the same. No matter our differences, and you hear me talk to our kids, my kids about this, the differences in skin color, religion, LBGTQ+, identity, any uh, socioeconomic languages, any of the differences that divide us, we all come together as one. Okay, now back to that. So I said, what do we need to do? We need to take all that money you saw, all that, all that money, we need to put it to transformational social, social emotional learning. We need to teach our kids how to deal with their feelings, how to, how to conflict resolution, and we need to put that in the curriculum. We need to put that with every class. We need to make that as common as writing and as math. How to deal with your feelings, because we don't teach it right now. And Lord, no, if I bring up COVID, the, the adjustment we have to make for that, that's even more critical that we have to drop the, uh, the standardized testing and put that energy towards transformational, hands-on, social-emotional learning. Go overnight camps, I heard overnight camps, going on student exchanges, getting a student, getting a student, a, a human being, and getting them out of their comfort zone and placing them in an unknown environment is the only way that we can really get where we need to be and transform our schools where we need them to be. Unstandardize it. So I'm telling you right now, I'm imploring, I'm begging, I'm asking every one of you that we need to 
join the crusade and high stakes testing, put it towards social emotional learning and transformational learning opportunities for students that will change their life and their trajectory. Go Vikes.